اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والفجر وليال عشر والشفع والوتر والليل إذا يس هل في ذلك قسم لذي حجر ألم كيف فعل ربك بعاد إرم ذات العماد التي لم يخلق مثلها في والثمود الذين جابوا الصخر بالواد وفرعون ذي الأوتاد الذين تغوا في البلاد فأكثروا فيها الفساد فصب عليهم ربك صوت عذاب إن ربك لبالمرصاد فأما الإنسان إذا ما ابتلاه ربك ربه فأكرمه ونعم فيقول ربي أكرمان وأما وأما إذا ما ابتلاه فقدر عليه رزقه كلا كلا بل لا تكرمون اليتيم ولا تحاذون على تعام وتأكلون الثرى تأكل اللمة وتحبون المال حبا جما كلا إذا دكت الأرض دكا دكا وجاء ربك والملك
Ahsan, thank you, Brother Ahmad Rashid. And uh, inshallah, we have a small gift for Brother Ahmad. Uh, he's obviously worth a lot more, but inshallah, this is from the center. So let's uh, welcome him with the salat ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Inshallah, now we have uh, two of our young sisters to recite a small poem for us. So let's welcome them with a salat ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Salawat. I have the reply to your question. If you would allow me, I'll present it. This is the one whose greatness the Valley of Mecca recognises. He is known by the sacred house and the holy sanctuary and the land outside the sanctuary. This is the son of the best God servants. This is the pure, pious one, the clean, eminent one. This is the one whose greatness the Valley of Mecca recognises. Salawat. For I know by far this is the greatest deed. My love for you, your imam, is so true. I was heartbroken heartbroken. If only you knew, and my tears would drop in vain for you. You are, you are so close to my heart, you will never depart. You were, you were born on the 3rd of Shaban. You were a gift from the Rahman. Your father was Al Haydar, the man who lifted the door of Kaaba. He he was the first Imam and also one of the first to embrace Islam. Your mother was Al Zahra. She loved you so much. Whenever she Whenever you talk to her, her heart was always touched. Without reading day and night, you, you fought against Yazid to show everyone the right. Salawat. MashaAllah, it takes a lot of courage to come up here and present something like that. So, uh, inshallah, they received their presence by our young sister Manessa. Let's all encourage them again with a salat ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Now, we have a small gift for one of our uh, longest serving uh, volunteers. He's uh, been the security of this center since I don't know how long. 
And uh, alhamdulillah, ever since Hash Fadi's been here, alhamdulillah, we've had zero threats to the center. We've always felt safe. I've never had to go home, you know, worried. <laughs> so inshallah, we have a small gift for our dear brother Hash Fadi. So let's all welcome him to the stage with the salat ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. May you continue to protect this center with your honorable services. Sallallahu alayhi wa Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Now, do we have any Husseins, any Sajjads, any Zains, any Abbas for tonight? Can we all come, to, come forward to, towards the stage so we can all give you like a small gift? Any Husseins, any Sajjads, any Zains, any Abd, Abdullah, Abba Abdullahs? Um, any Abu Fadl's? Abu Fadl? Okay, and we have any of the children either? Do I have any of the children? yeah, come forward. You can collect on behalf of the relatives too. We have a lot of gifts to give out tonight. Okay, and now it's time for our talented reciter to come again. You've already heard him with the recitation of the Holy Quran. So let's welcome him again. He's got some uh, poetry for us. Brother Ahmad Rashid, let's welcome him with the Salat ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Inna fil jannati nahran min laban Inna fil jannati nahran min laban Li'aliyan wa Husaynan wa Hassan Inna fil jannati nahran min laban Inna fil jannati nahran min laban Li'aliyan wa Husaynan wa Hassan Surely a river of milk flows in heaven Surely a river of milk flows in heaven for Ali and for Hussein and Hassan. For Ali and for Hussein and Hassan. Kullu man kana muhibban lahumu. Kullu man kana muhibban lahumu Yadkhulu al-jannata min ghayri hazan Yadkhulu al-jannata min ghayri hazan Whoever loves them enters paradise Whoever loves them enters paradise, enters paradise without sadness, enters paradise without sadness. Inna fil jannati nahran min laban. 
ان فیل جنت نہران من لبان لعلین و حسین و حسن Surely a river of milk flows in heaven. Surely a river of milk flows in heaven for Ali and for Hussein and Hassan. حب أهل البيت فرضا عندنا. حب أهل البيت فرضا عندنا وبهذا الحب لا نخشى المحن For us love of the Prophet's family is a must and cause of this love we don't feel sadness إن في الجنة نهرا من لبن إن في الجنة نهرا من لبن لعلي وحسين وحسن لعلي وحسين وحسن صلوات على محمد وعلي محمد Thank you, Brother Ahmed Rashid, for that beautiful recitation, mashallah, twice tonight. Let's uh, encourage him again with the salat ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Okay, inshallah, I'd like to introduce uh, our main speaker for tonight, Sheikh Mansour Lagai. Sheikh Mansour is the founder of uh, e Hausa, the program e Hausa, and alhamdulillah, numerous hours and efforts have uh, been put into this program um, to, inshallah, be run for our community. I recommend everyone to w uh, visit their website on www.ehauser.com and have a flick through some of the uh, programs that they have. They have some single courses as well as some uh, 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 semesters that you can uh, take upon. So without further ado, let's all welcome uh, Sheikh Mansour uh, to begin the lecture. And just a quick uh, notice, Sheikh Mansour is overseas. We're here in Australia. So let's send him a salawat that reaches him all the way to Iran. Sallu ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Thank you very much, Sayyid Muhammad. A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajeem. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala ala sallimina. حبيب نفوسنا وحبيب قلوبنا أبي القاسم محمد صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم لا سيما بقية الله في بأرواح العالمين لمقدمه الفداء السلام عليك يا أبا عبد الله السلام عليك أيها الحسين الشهيد السلام على أخيك أبو الفضل العباس السلام على علي بن الحسين زين العابدين السلام عليكم يا أهل بيت النبوة ورحمة الله وبركاته Respected brothers and sisters in Islam السلام عليكم جميعا ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنهتدي لولا أن هدانا الله such a blessed gathering in a very blessed month of the Sha'ban. Sha'ban, as I will inshallah perhaps I'll touch on it also, is a month that uh, all various type of goodness are branching out from it. From a very uh, famous hadith, the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, according to the narration of Amir al Salamullah Alayhi, the Imam says that the branches of paradise have come down to earth during the month of Sha'ban take advantage and adhere and cling to any of the good deeds during this month so that inshallah it can lead you to paradise. Especially tonight, we are celebrating in this Beit al-Hussein, 
the birth of three heroes of Karbala, the master of the youth of paradise, the masters of Shohada, Sayyid al-Shohada, he's the most loyal brother of Al-Fadl Abbas, Qamar Bani Hashim, Bab al-Hawa'ij, and the only Imam survival of Karbala, Imam Zain al-Abidin alayhi salam, alayhi salam, sallu ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. <laughs> the reason perhaps I'm justifying it, uh, especially after listening, mashallah, to the recitation of Ahmad Rashid, the, the poetry that he recited in two languages, very mesmerizing. Uh, I, I was thinking before the program starts, uh, the reason for delay, perhaps uh, the MC knew that uh, Sheikh Mansour's talk tonight is a bit of rate, has a bit of rating. It's more suitable for 18 plus. So those who are 18 plus, please say salawat ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad so that I know whether I should deliver it or not. Okay, I guess we have a few 18 plus, alhamdulillah, sitting here. Uh, I, I begin with posing a question, celebrating these three heroes uh, tonight. The question is the following. I want to know whether in the eyes of Abu Abdullah al Hussein and the heroes of Karbala, from the viewpoint of Islam, am I considered the Husseini, someone who follows the uh, footsteps of Imam Hussein alayhi salam, and practically in his lifestyle perceives Imam Hussein and the martyrs of Karbala as their leaders, in so much as Qasim was saying practically, Amiri Husseinun wa Ni'm al Amir. You all have heard of this. When he was fighting, said that my leader is Hussein, and what a beautiful leader I have. And he was following the footsteps of his uncle and his leader. I want to know what are the criteria to be the follower of Imam Hussein alayhi salam, and to accept Imam Hussein as a leader in practice. I will check, I will say that, okay, I start with myself, you can apply it to yourself. As a sheikh, I give lectures, inshallah, about Imam Hussein alayhi salam during Muharram and other occasions. Any opportunity comes, inshallah, I'm among those who go to the Ziyara trip, and I try to go for uh, Arba'in work every year, attend the majalis of Imam Hussein alayhi salam, cry for Imam Hussein alayhi salam. Others and everyone can say that I'm among the volunteers holding the majalis for Abu Abdullah al-Hussein. I'm among those who sponsor and contribute towards holding the majalis of Imam Hussein alayhi salam and things like that that we normally do. Celebrating the birth of the Imam, commemorating the martyrdom of the Imams. Am I a Husseini just by doing so? Or there is more uh, involved in it? Imam al-Baqir and Imam al-Sadiq alayhi salam in the ziyarat al-Ashura and other ziyarat for Imam Hussein alayhi salam, they have given us an instruction that that is the, the one that determines whether I am Husseini in practice or it is only a claim and on the lip of, uh, uh, tip of my, my, my tongue. Imams, they teach us in the ziyara, Allahumma ja'al mahyaya mahya muhammadin wa ala muhammad wa mamati mamata muhammadin wa ala muhammad. Oh, ya Allah, bless me, include me among those that their lifestyle is the lifestyle of the Holy Prophet and the household of the Holy Prophet. The way I live my life, of course, nobody can be like them. That goes be, uh, without say. But I am along the line, inshallah. I endeavor to be along the line of the lifestyle of Imam Hussein alayhi salam. <clears throat> the question is, what is the lifestyle of Imam Hussein alayhi salam? And what is the core of the lifestyle of Anbiya, Awliya, and particularly the heroes that we are celebrating their birth tonight. To the best of my knowledge, and to prove that this is something that Imam Hussein alayhi salam, you know that Imam Hussein, during the story of Karbala, even on Ashura, delivered numbers of sermons, more than one. But the very last sermon that is reported by historians from Imam Hussein alayhi salam, in that Imam Hussein alayhi salam is giving us this instruction. is leaving this message and departing this world. And that is where the Imam says, Ibad Allah, inshallah, applies to all of us. Servants of God, slaves of God, ittaqullah, wa kunu min dunya ala hazar, something like this. That servants of God, you who claim you are the slaves of God, ittaqullah, 
با امام حسین علیه السلام سیز ابو الفضل عباس امام زین العابد they say that the reason that we achieve what we achieve is because the core aspect of our lifestyle rotated around taqwa around this taqwa and taqwa whatever we wanted to say whatever we wanted to see however we wanted to live our life we, we had a criterion and that is taqwa checking it against taqwa if it's compatible with taqwa we take it if it's not we don't and we don't care how much we are going to lose of the worldly uh, values not only that they had a supplication but begin with this and inshallah i want to end with this as well because my main focus tonight is about your children is about our children is about our offspring is about the next generation that they love may be in jeopardy depending on how we as parents deal with the situation this was part of the dua of imam hussein alayhi salam who has learned it from his father amir al mu'minin it is mentioned in surah al furqan chapter 25 towards the end of the surah there is a turat as salat let me just give also this contribution uh, to you inshallah for the concerned parents there is a two rakat salat for the best interest of your children for the success of your children in dunya and akhirah if you wish to learn that salat say salawat ala muhammad wa ala muhammad <laughs> Of course, learn to practice it. It's very simple. Two rakat salat, rahmatullah alayhi, ayatullah bahjad was saying that you can include these two rakat salat as part of your salat al-layl even as well. Lay, daytime, nighttime, another rawayat says that do it daytime. Whenever that is possible for you, it is permissible to do it. Two rakat salat with the intention of you, you are dedicating it to your children. Not only to your children, learn from Prophet Ibrahim, to your offspring, all the way to the day of judgment. See five, ten generations of yours to come and include them in this salat as well. In the first rak'ah after the ham, you recite Surah Inna Anzalna Fi Laylat Al Qad, Surah Al Qad. So Surah Al Ham plus Surah Al Qad. Second rak'ah after the ham, you recite Surah Al Kawthar, Inna Aqayna Al Kawthar. See, very simple. It literally, it literally doesn't take more than two minutes, but such an effective uh, prayer. And then in the qunut of this surah at salat, this is where I, uh, I'm quoting from Imam Hussain alayhi salam. In the qunut of this salat, like Amir al muminin like Imam Hussain alayhi salam, like Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam, read this ayah that is towards the end of Surah Al-Furqan. You can find it and memorize it very easy. And a couple of times you say it, inshallah, you memorize it. The, the dua is it, Rabbana. هب لنا من أزواجنا وذرياتنا قرة أعين وجعلنا للمتقين إماما My nurturer, O oh, yeah, Allah My creator, O yeah, Allah The one, everything is in your hand Make my When we say أزواجنا Because we are praying in, 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 in congregation Our wives, that means our ladies And our offspring to be the delight of our eyes and include us among the leaders of the pious, not only the pious, the leaders of the pious. And that's why Imam Hussain alayhi salam was Imam al muttaqin as Amir al muminin was Imam al muttaqin Ahlul Bayt and Muslim were Ahmad al muttaqin Let us try to be their practical role models for our children if, inshallah, we want them to be pious. I always mention that. My children are not what their father says. My children are what they, how their father lives, lives by. So the way that practically you and I live, we become practically role models for our children. Parents who are using, forgive me to say, vulgar language in the way that they communicate with their children. A mom who loses the plot and, all, and doesn't realize how she's talking to her children. She cannot expect her children to be respectful and speak respectfully. Troubled children, they usually come, if not always, come from troubled families. Parents who are too busy fighting each other. This is not the expression of taqwa. They are not practicing taqwa. And if they are not practicing taqwa, they are not going to be able to educate and to bring the children as pious children. This is the story for tonight, and that's what I told you that is for 18 plus. 
First, let me quickly introduce the concept of taqwa and the significance of taqwa. Inshallah, we have heard so much about it, but this is just a very brief introduction until I get to the uh, main talk, inshallah, that I have for you tonight is Salawat ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, I introduce a textbook to you if you want to take this any further for the rest of your life and the life of all humans on earth. This textbook that is a textbook of Taqwa is called the Holy Quran. So if somebody tells you that what is the best textbook for, the, for learning about Taqwa, tell them the Holy Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the second page of the Quran is introducing that. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alif la mim dalik al-kitab la rayba fi hudan lil-muttaqeen. That means those who are seeking guidance, this is the God. This is the guidance book for those who are seeking taqwa. The Holy Quran is the book of taqwa. All the prophets of the past, something that is common among all divine religions, and I have checked it in the Old and New Testament in the Bible as well, it still is there. Numbers of the verses of the Bible also speak about taqwa. Quran is the textbook of taqwa. Quran says that any prophet we send, we tell them that go to people, to your community and tell them, why don't you gain this shield of protection? I will tell you what the taqwa is. The Almighty God himself, he says that I send you to earth and I put you on a trial in your life. You are going through the trial throughout your, your life. Do you want me to give you a clue, a secret key that you can always pass the exams that I put you through? The, the Quran says that, وَلَقَدْ وَصَّيْنَا الَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْكِتَابَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ وَإِيَّاكُمْ and an attaqullah. I had told generations before you, your generation and the forthcoming generations, I have the same clue for them. There's only one secret key to, to pass the, the divine trials, to successfully depart from this dunya, and that is if you gain this shield of taqwa. If you want me to briefly tell you that why do we pray, why do we fast, you are familiar with this ayah, that's not only for fasting, Brothers and sisters, everything that is prescribed to us in Islam, all different vitamins that we refer to them as different worshiping acts are so that you and I throughout our life slowly but surely gain this germ of taqwa, this shield of taqwa. Taqwa, I'm coming to it. Taqwa is like a shield that you need to wear it to protect yourself. Lot like firefighters that in order for them to be able to go through the fire without being burned, they have to that uh, bunker, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, bunker gear or fire gear to protect themselves. The fire gear that you and I can have, and unless you have it, you are going to be burned in dunya and in, in the barzakh is called a taqwa. I, had, I remember I used to mention this and I repeat and, uh, this and uh, come to the point. There is an ayah in Surah Maryam that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that there is no single living soul among you unless he has or she has to go through hell. My dear brothers and sisters, lo and behold, to reach to the eternal abode in paradise, we have to go through hell in dunya and in akhirah. The hardship, you call it the hell of dunya, but the actual one is in the hereafter. And Quran says that the only people who can safe and sound go through hell and they live in Sydney, they live in Los Angeles, they live in the West in the, amidst a community of LGBT plus, all the filthy corruption, everything, you name it. But you see that they're not being harmed. How come? Because they have this shield of taqwa. They live with people, but they are not like them. They choose not to be like them. They have that shield of taqwa so that these viruses don't attack them, don't affect them. The ayah that I want to start, I haven't started my talk yet. Huh? This is just an introduction. Let's say salawat to start it, inshallah, with, with the beginning of the, getting into the serious part of the discussion. Sallu ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Allow me to share with you tonight part of my experience because the, the occasion for Abu Abdullah Hussein is not an ordinary occasion, simply because Imam Hussein was not an ordinary Imam. Very heavy responsibility I feel on my shoulders speaking tonight. 
allow me to share with you my life experience of living in Australia and other parts of the world. And in fact, I want to take it back even, mashallah, Ahmad Rashid, I hope he doesn't mind me congratulating him and bless him, inshallah, with another salawat because he's newly engaged. Salam Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. I always mention to my uh, students or those applicants for the e when I'm interviewing them, if they are single, I tell them that now that I know you are single from tonight, you will be included in my list of people that I humbly pray for them to get married. Because no matter what you do to uh, maintain your religion, you can only do half of it. The other half comes through the marriage as long as you can maintain it. By the, by the way, getting to the point, I was just engaged. And I remember that back then I was going to the uh, Haram of Sayyid Masume in Rome with my wife. On Thursday nights, attending the Akumail uh, in the Haram. We met a Sayyid, long story short, I've mentioned in other occasions, perhaps you have heard, long story, that very noble Sayyid that I never saw him anymore in my life, very uh, uh, funny, his face full of uh, noor and everything, a scholar. He read this ayah to me almost 40 years ago. It's less than that, I'm not that old, but less than 40 years ago. He, he read this ayah to me, and still I remember, and I'd like to share it with you. For those who are newly wed, for those who are married with children, for, uh, 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 for those who uh, are intending to get married. The ayah is in Surah Al-Tahrim, for the reference. To remember the reference, remember 66, 6, Surah Al-Tahrim, ayah number 6. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is addressing all of us, inshallah. Ya ayyuhal amanu. او انفسكم واهليكم نارا وقودها الناس والحجاره او يو هو بيليف تيك ذات شيلد اوف تقوى بروتكت يور سيلف اند يور فاميلي اجينست ا فاير ذات از فيول ار سيرتن هيومنز ذات دي هاف ثينك تانك ذير از ان انتليجنس بيهايند ات دي ار وركينج ذير از ا لوت اوف فاندينج بيهايند ات اند دي ار مانوفاكتشرينج تو دو وات تو بيرن يو to burn your children, to bring them like, to make them like yourself. This is what I told you that my talk starts from here tonight and is rating 18 and plus, particularly for parents or those who are inshallah to be parents in the, in the future. As one of the applications of this idea of protecting yourself, obviously the core of protection rotates around protecting your faith and your religion. I always used to say that in Australia, there is a Medicare, but there's no religious care. There's a Medicare card, but not religious care card, okay? You need to sacrifice, you need to spend time and money to protect your faith and the faith of your children. Just before I come, a lady from one of the cities in the States, she was asking that where we want to live in New York is very expensive, and can we go somewhere else farther away in another small town? that is easier to accommodate, find accommodation and cheaper. I told her that don't stay out of away from the community. It's dangerous, it's dangerous. Accept to live in a home, more humble place than being, and, but being with the community for the reason that I tell you. I, I begin again with another memory that I have. It goes back again to donkey ages. Some years ago in, in Sydney, I used to run a course in various churches in one of the uh, Catholic academies in Ultimo, I was running a course on the spirituality of Islam, all right? In one of the sessions, I was talking about the wisdom behind this uh, dress code, Islamic dress code, that is not only for females, but is more apparent uh, when you look at the Muslim females, the hijab that we are talking about. After the talk, one of the ladies, and mind you that all my audience are either priests or to, be, to become priests, students of uh, Catholic theology. One of the ladies, she, was, she stood up and she said that, why can't you guys, you, your ladies dress like us? Why can't you be like us? And I said to her that uh, the, the coordinator was a little bit hesitant. I said, no, no, that's okay. I'm a teacher, please, by all means, ask any question you have. I said to her, ma'am, what do you mean to be like us? Dress like you, drink like you, mate like you. How far do you want us to be like you? And look at the difference. Look, tell me which one is more liberal. My religion tells me, Lakum dinokum, 
you practice the values you believe, allow me to practice the values I believe. This is what my religion is telling me when it comes to the kuffar. That's about the kuffar. But you are telling me that we have to dress like you, we have to drink like you, we have to live like you, and unless you live like them the way that they live their life like them, otherwise they are not going to give up. I will give you some supports for that. Unless and until you become like them in all aspects, then only you become fair dinkem, dinkidai, ozi, as, as they call it. If you say salawat, I will tell you the reference from the Quran for it. I will tell you the reference from the Quran for it. Remember, brothers and sisters, I told you in the beginning, our textbook for taqwa is the Holy Quran. Please, please, pretty please, spend time to send your children to the madrasa on Saturdays at, at Ahiyek, there is madrasa, other places. And spend time to learn the Quran, teach your children the Quran. Wallah al azim this is just not advertising. I've lived with it as a father, not grandfather. I'm telling you, this is the only way for salvation. Subhanallah, how blessed we are. 1400 years ago, the Almighty God in Surah Al-Nisa chapter four has told us this, that we are experiencing it in the year 2021 in, in Australia. What is that? Quran says, What do law takfuruna kama kafaru fatakununa sawa? They endeavor. They have intelligence behind this. They have all the means and funds and everything to do what? So that what this lady said happens, that you become like them. Fatakununa sawa. You become disbelievers like them. If not the first generation, second generation. If not the second migrant, migrant generation, the third migrant generation should be shown in our nets. What I told you that I heard it with my ears from one of the senior immigration officers back in 1995. First migrant generation, we support, we provide even social security and everything, that's fine. Second generation, they should be like us. If not, at least the third generation should be Ozi, Ozi, Fair Dinkin, Ozi. I'm talking about the negative side of it, not the positive side of it. And in achieving that, in achieving that, please be, be, be with me. In achieving that, we have to make sure that the most essential part of achieving that is the educational system, pedagogical system. We have to have full control over the pedagogical system in Australia and everywhere else. Why? And again, subhanAllah, you'll see that the Almighty God in the Quran has told us this, that they are practicing it. Quran says, in yasqafukum in surah al mumtahana those who have a bit of arabic background they know that yasqafukum is coming from the root of thaqafa if you have a bit of arabic background you should know what the meaning of thaqafa is thaqafa means culture thaqafa means education thaqafa means cultivation thaqafa means skill being skillful all connected to each other put the pieces of puzzles together it means a lot that means, and subhanAllah, Arabic is a very profound language, very profound language. Quran says, and unfortunately, when you go to the translations, most of the translations, they have missed this essential meaning of the term thaqafa. Quran says, if they have an upper hand in education, if they are more skillful than you in education, if they are the one who are developing the curriculum, education, the pedagogy for your children. If they are the ones who are producing the children books, the story books for your children, time will come that you will see that your innocent kids is reading a story book to learn her English and English. And the name of the book as one of the childcare workers was showing me is my two moms and me, that papa and me. Huh? That is happening. Brothers, sisters, I'm bound to share this information with you if you are a concerned parent, and inshallah you are. Back in 90s, our concern was the following. I remember there was a, a, a subject in the school from the kidney all the way to year 10. It, the, the, it, it was called PDHPE. P 
PDHP, if I, I hope I've said it correctly, see. When they don't want you to know what they are teaching, they are coming with acronyms and abbreviations. I remember back then I was randomly asking one of the kids at Athelstan Public School, do you know what is P PDHPE? And they go like this. Had no idea what this stand for. And then let alone parents even, they didn't know what was it. Parents of mainly at that back then in the 90s, first migrant generations, and uh, their English wasn't that strong enough. They would feel timid to go to school and talk to the principal, to the teachers. And they were taking advantage of that. Even I'm giving the example of Afghanistan public school because it, as you know, as it is, I suppose, it's a school that absolute majority of the students are Muslim Shia. And yet parents had no idea what their children were learning. Either they were too busy making money or they were not English literate to, to know and to, to understand. I remember Rahmatullah Allah Haj Ahmad, Dr. Ahmad Ahmad Hamoud, please, for the pleasure of his soul and the soul of all those who passed away. And I remember Haj Mayam uh, Hijazi also was teaching for many years in that school, and she was also helping, supporting us. Please, for the pleasure of their soul, Sallu Allah Muhammad wa Allah Muhammad. We used to sit with the principal and bring our concern. And you know what she was saying that sometimes she was telling me that, why do you, uh, why are you concerned? Why are you putting, I'm, I'm just paraphrasing, putting your nose in something. We don't get any complaint from parents. We were going door to door, knocking, getting parents to come to the school and attend and raise some concern. Unfortunately, very much not to, to any other that was back in 90s, my dear brothers, the children of then are not parents themselves. They have no more excuse to say that I don't know how to speak with the teacher or to be the principal. Now English is your first language, kind of. You should know what your children are learning. You should read between the lines. What, you should have concern. Why is it that the governments are subsidizing daycare, childcare, public school, high school, tertiary, all of these are subsidized for the sake of God? Because you are paying taxes? No, my dear. The reason, the reason behind that is the following. Because we are supposed to educate we are supposed to raise your children. We are supposed, in a simple term, we are the ones who are wiring the brains of your children, yet you have to pay for it. But don't worry, we subsidize it for you. And therefore, you see, childcare business has become, industry has become a very huge industry. And especially if you know the game, those who are in this industry, they know what I'm talking about. All of this and promoting it, Back then, 20 years ago, we didn't have daycare, to my knowledge. Today, in Western countries, just a mother from labor, she can take her innocent baby to the daycare and go back to work. Mom, go to work. Don't worry, we look after your child. And you know how they are looking after the child. They want to teach her a spelling. And what I'm telling you, I'm talking about the facts. What they are teaching, they call it safe school program. Exactly like how they used to call it PDHPE, physical development, health, sweet names. Don't get me wrong, there were good stuff in it. I, I remember back then I got the textbook with the CV coming from the Department of Education, went through it. Some of the stuff were good, necessary, but some not. That's what Amir al Mumini says that they were mixing good and bad together to be able to sell it. This is part of marketing. So that if you have any complaints, what are you talking about? This is what we are teaching and showing you the good side, but not the full story. Like now, they call it safe school program. It's very unsafe. When they are teaching them a spelling, it's go line like this. L for lesbian, G for gay, I for intersex. It's 18 plus, huh? Salu ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. It's become almost mandatory in all public schools and heads up private schools, Islamic schools are in the queue sooner or later as well. That this is part of the school curriculum 
LGBT plus inclusive sexuality program. It has to go, has to come already part of the program. That's what they are planning. Allow me to vent it out a little bit tonight. Please forgive me if I'm very explicit and frank. Unless we are frank, we cannot address the issues. But it 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 really hurts me when I see that some people are so much busy and wasting their time and our time. Sheikh, was Monday the first day of Shaban or Tuesday the first day of Shaban? Habibi, get along. <laughs> Take a break. You are losing your children, we are losing our children, and your concern is whether Monday is the first day of Shaban or, or Tuesday is the first day of Shaban. And subhanAllah, for the last 25 years, it's been like this. I don't know what's wrong with some members of the community. They never want to grow. And this year, one of the brothers told me, Sheikh, can you put something together and explain? I said, I'm very sorry. After Since 1995, I've been making calendar. I'm really sick and tired of this. Enough is enough. That reminds me of what the Quran is talking about. Some Christians at the time of the Prophet about the story of Ashab al kahf You're familiar, you might have seen the movie of Ashab al kahf They were debating, some Christian priests, they were debating that the number of the people of the cave, how many were they? Some they say three, including their dogs. Some they say five excluding their dogs. Some they say seven, including their dogs. And they were debating each other. The Almighty God says to the Prophet, Fala don't, don't get into this discussion. Don't waste your time. It's the month of Sha'ban. Amir al-Mumani, salamullah alayhi, walked into the masjid. And some of the muhajireen, that means they were like rivers, new Muslims, they were debating over pronunciation. You know, Arabs, they say, Nahnu ahlu bad. Yani, we are the one who can pronounce abad or balabalin properly. Unless you are Arab, you cannot pronounce abad or balabalin properly. They were debating whose pronunciation is more accurate. Amir al Mumani, salamul alayhi, walks in. They say, Ya Allah, ahlan bi afsah al Arab. The most eloquent Arab walked in. Ya Ali, please you decide. You tell us whose recitation is correct. Please, please listen to the reply of Amir al Mumani, salamullah alayhi. To register it in your mind, please bless your gathering with salawat ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Amir al Mumani, salamullah alayhi, he says, Antum ila i'rab al a'mal, ahwaj minkum ila i'rab al aqwal. You are more in need of fixing the grammar of your action than the grammar of your speech. God is not going to send you to hell if the grammar of your speech was not so accurate. Don't get me wrong. I'm not getting into that technicality, jurisprudential issues. Look at the bigger picture. Imam says that first and foremost, your concern should be the grammar of your action. Your concern should be, okay, whether Monday or Tuesday, what next? How many of you offered and recited the Salat Awal al Shah, the Salat that is mustahab to be recited in the first day of the month of Sha'ban? That should be your concern. How many of you us have read the uh, Salawat Sajjadi in the month of Sha'ban, Munajat Sha'bani in the month of Sha'ban, have been fasting in the month of Sha'ban? These are supposed to be our concern. Monday or Tuesday, Habibi, okay. And they are insisting it has to be, no, no, it's Tuesday. Okay, halas, it's Tuesday. What next? But no, Sheikh, it affects my Ramadan. How does it affect your Ramadan? No, it doesn't affect your Ramadan. Take my word that inshallah, inshallah, by the grace of God, Ya Rab, I've been praying yet that Ya Rab, inshallah, on uh, 13th of April, the sky is clear at sunset you will see the beautiful uh, uh, crescent moon of the month of Ramadan. And then, and only then, you will see that the calendar of Imam Hussein Center was correct for Shaban. Because you will see that everybody in Sydney, inshallah, will be starting the month of Ramadan on the 14th of April. And still, if you have time, which I don't have, but if you are insisting, by all means, call me in a public forum. Go on Facebook. YouTube, let's talk about it. Anyway, I'm so sorry to, to waste your time on this. I wanted to tell you that, unfortunately, we are deviated and uh, distracted from what is sh what should be our real concern, and debating other issues are not really concern at all. 
And for the last 25 years or so, I've been mentioning the lifestyle of Ahlul Bayt and Muslim. Quran at the end of the day, when it speaks about the people of the cave, you think that Quran will clear cut the issue and tell them how many were there in the, in the cave. Quran doesn't give you the number. Why? Because Quran wants to teach us a lesson that my dear understand there are more important, understand the priorities. It doesn't matter how many were people of the cave. What matters is the lesson that you should draw from it. What matters at the moment is that out there in, on the ground, we have our innocent children that we are losing them. And we don't realize. Let's put our heads and hands together, put aside all the differences. We have a common ground, not only as Shia, not only as Muslims, invite even Christians to your forum because they also have the same concern as you and I do. And let's up, come up with some solutions. Definitely there are solutions. Here is Quran. Remember, that's why I'm bringing it to the issue of taqwa. Quran says, Man yattaqillah, If you want an exit, safe exit from this situation, there is an exit. Definitely there is an exit. Every time throughout the history, there has been always challenges. As I told you in the 90s, the challenges of the new migrants was that they could not understand it. I remember a cab driver, an Iranian brother, he was coming, he came to me to the center and said, Sheikh Mansur, I don't pray. And I'm sorry to mention, I'm quoting his word. You obviously don't know who I'm talking about. Sometimes I have a sip of drink as well, but come on, I cannot take it that my daughter brings a, a, a boyfriend to my house. That was their concern back then in the 90s. And now people are desensitized. A mother comes to me and she says, Sheikh Mansour, I'm happy that my daughter has a boyfriend. At least I know she's a straight. This is how the generation is getting deviated from the right path. Parents, we are responsible. Parents, wake up. Mashayikh, ulama, scholars, everybody, Sheikh Mansour. Directors of the centers, wake up. There is, look at the bigger picture. Please get together, have think tank. And as I told you that, I humbly have suggestions and ideas and there are ideas, things that we can do. As long as we have time to get together, as long as we have serious concern as parents, we, there are solutions, inshallah. I'm looking at the time, my 40 minutes is just getting over. Jazakumullah khaira, kullu amin wa antum alf khair. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala include us among the pious people in dunya. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect our children, our offspring, all the way to the day of judgment, so that inshallah on the day of judgment, we are not being countable and our, uh, and our children inshallah are the delights of our eyes. Sallu ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Thank you for that beautiful lecture. And inshallah, Sheikh, we need uh, we need your help. Is he still with us? Yeah. yeah. Inshallah, we need your help, Sheikh, to see if the, the audience have been listening. So we'd like to encourage you to ask four questions of your choice based on the lecture that you've just presented to us. I don't want to put you said Muhammad on the spot, but uh, no, I won't embarrass anyone. I wanted to mention, I said Muhammad, if he remembers, but I'll make it general. Uh, one of the, who could, who can remember what was the Salat for the children? Remember I told you there's a Turek at Salat for, to, to recite, gifting it to your children for inshallah, for the success of your children. Anyone can describe how that Salat is performed? Yeah, it's on um, Fatiha and then back. What's the Qadr? Qadr. 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 Ahsan, mashallah. Please say salawat for him. <laughs> Sister's brain usually is sharper and it's known that they can do so many things at the same time. Even 
if while I was talking, they were, I don't know, messaging someone or talking to someone else, I'm sure they could at the same time listen to me. Let us see if that is correct or not. Any of the sisters remember the reference for that uh, supplication, for that dua in the Qunut of Salat, al, uh, uh, Salat for the children? What was the reference? Which, which surah? Give me the surah number. Of course, you know. I gave you a clue. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Alaikum salam, um, it was Surah Al-Furqan, and I found the ayah, ayah 74. Masha, mashallah, ahsan, ahsan. Surah Al-Furqan, ayah 74. Can you read it, please? She said, <laughs> It begins with this, وَالَّذِينَ يَقُولُونَ رَبَّنَا You can read the English. <laughs> May God grant you, inshallah, the association with Surah Al Furqan in Dunya Al Akhirah and grant your dua for your children and our offspring. Sallu ala Muhammad wa Muhammad. Oh. Say, so, Muhammad, is it enough or do you want more questions? One more question, Chef. One more question, okay. One more question. This question also is very essential. I want you to remember these references, this ayah of the Quran. There is an ayah in the Quran that uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that if those whose values are different from yours, they have control over the educational system, then you have lost your children or you may lose your children. Anyone remembers the reference for that ayah? 666. Surah Tahrim. Masha'Allah. Surah Tahrim. Remember three, remember triple six. Surah 66, ayah six. Ahsan, thank you very much, Chef. And inshallah, anyway, um, you have an option to do. But before that, let's uh, welcome Hadani Sharif with a small announcement. Salah Muhammad, wa Muhammad. Chef, now, will you be able to join us for this small auction? What do you want me to do, Hajali? Uh, hopefully auction something, but if you're... You know, I'm not a good auctioneer, especially um, remotely auctioning. Well, neither, neither Isn't Haj Rabi there? Haj Rabi is, I'm sure, enjoying some desserts outside. <laughs> <laughs> uh, forgive me if he's not, but that's a pretty good place to find him usually. <laughs> but uh, mm -hmm. while, um, while Haj Rabi is coming in and while, we're, uh, while we still have Chef Mansour, if I can indulge you, Chef, uh, for a moment, please, if you'll indulge me, sorry. Um, uh, sorry, before I start, I want to put up here for everyone, this is what we're going to auction, and I'll tell you the reason for the auction as well. Uh, and for just for a few brief moments, inshallah, we're going to get a little bit serious, right? I don't know whether you've been watching, keeping, uh, keeping abreast of the news, uh, or just generally keeping informed of what's happening generally around the world, but also especially in a little country in the middle of the Middle East called Yemen. Everybody's familiar with the name of the country, with where it is, with who's there, etc., etc. Let's ignore for a moment any of the politics and any of the issue that is there currently, except for one issue. If you're as old as I am, and, and if you're a little bit older, than me, like Sheikh Mansour, maybe a few of the brothers and sisters in this audience, and maybe even Hajar Um, You will remember in the 80s, there was a very big issue in Africa called, Af Africa called the African famine. This millions of people died from malnutrition and from a complete and total utter lack of food and water. If you've kept, if you've, 
you kept informed with the news, you will know that this week, or in the last week, Yemen has been declared as the next African famine. There are currently 1.2 million on the brink of starvation and death. 1.2 million people on the brink of starvation and death. And I'm talking about right from the oldest old person right down to the newborn baby. They are on the brink of starvation. I wish I had some pictures I could show you up here, but unfortunately I don't. Uh, following on from Chef Monsu's speech, this is very much 18 plus but I would encourage every family to look up and find out what's going on in you and find a picture of those children who are malnourished, those children who are, who are born so underweight that they're, they're this big. Children are being born this big. They're young children. There are, there are beautiful young children in this crowd over here. Can you imagine a three or four year old that's barely grown beyond this or has grown and then has shrunk back down through starvation and dehydration to the point where the skin is stretched across their bones and, what, and anything that you see they're like a walking ghost and I'm sorry that I'm getting so serious about this but it's something that I've been looking at for, for the past few weeks and it's something that has upset me so much that I felt that I had to take a few minutes of your time on even on such a grand occasion as the celebration of these three holy personalities to mention this particular cause we are, inshallah, raising funds like so many fantastic organizations around the world and even here in Sydney, we are raising funds so that we can donate directly to Yemen, either directly ourselves or through some of these fantastic organizations who, are, who have done and are continuing to do so much great work around the world. But this time we are, as Imam St. Santista, we're, fo we're focusing on Yemen because of what's happening there to these innocent children and people. Again, ignore the politics or ignore he said this and she did that. That's not the problem here. The problem is that there are people dying and starving while we're doing something as wonderful as enjoying this wonderful air conditioning, the safety of where we live, knowing that, in short, there is no harm, there's no threat in this country to us whatsoever. And we have an opportunity here to make a difference that the people in a place like Yemen, they can't even get a sip of water let alone anything else. So, with that, inshallah tonight we're going to auction this basket of these wonderful gifts, perfumes, books, watches, and so many other things in this wonderful basket. And all of those funds that we raise will go directly to help those people in the end. And I'm reaching out to everybody here that inshallah you can make some donation towards it, and we can make a difference in the lives of those people there. I'm getting a bit worked up on mentioning all of these things, but inshallah Hajjudir can take it from here, and uh, you'll welcome him with the salawat al Muhammad wa Muhammad, and also Sheikh Mansour, sorry, forgive me, if there's anything that you'd like to mention, of course you're more than welcome to mention salawat al Muhammad wa Muhammad. <laughs> Before Hajj Rabi starts, may I suggest something? Uh, uh, my style of auction is different, a little bit different from Hajj Rabi. My style is a bit more difficult. I mentioned my style, and then you choose whether you want Rabi to be the auctioneer or Sheikh Mansour. The style of SML for auction, for those who remember in the old days, is that whoever bids, like for this basket, they have to donate the money that they have uh, uh, like uh, pledged for whether you win or not, because I am, I'm sure that the reason nobody is after that basket, we all want to donate for this godly and very good cause, which is definitely very humanitarian cause, irrespective of any religion or any nationality or anything. Uh, whereas if you want Hajj Rabi to be the auctioneer, goes the normal, I suppose, goes the normal the style of the auction. So whoever- great, great minds think alike. I was thinking of something similar. <laughs> Then, Hajjabi, let's try it this way. Inshallah, we can raise more funds for those disadvantaged children. Can I, can I just say something? First of all, Salam alaikum, brothers and sisters. Salam alaikum, brothers and sisters. Truly, tonight is a beautiful occasion. And sometimes I, I think when we're doing, when we're having a fundraiser, 
are we really removing from the great feeling of celebrating Mount Hussein on his son's birthday or on Mount Bass's birthday on his son? But really, Mount Hussein has taught us not to forget the impoverished and the orphans. So even on his birthday or any occasion, we shouldn't forget the people who are most needy. But I just want to just recall one little story because Ali Sharif said, Today, Imam Hussein Center is donating money to Yemen. A few months ago, we had some directors of other centers ask somebody, can you come and help us with our center? So this is another center that asked some directors if we can help with their center. And the answer was, brothers and sisters, are you raising money for the orphans? Are you guys working for the community? Because if you don't do that as a center, God is not going to help you. Because part of having an establishment is to remember the needy. Part of having a celebration for Imam Hussain is to remember the needy. And Ali, you don't need to tell people about Yemen. I think people here, brothers and sisters, you know what's happening Yemen. Every night I say what's happening there is, is, is genocide. However, with our prayers, which is much more important than money, with our prayers, with our donations, inshallah we'll see the end to Zulam. Ya Allah So Shaykh Mansur was suggesting. Today, let's make it a big night, a big, big effort towards Yemen. Everything we make tonight is going towards Yemen. A beautiful basket of goodies, watches, perfumes, all sorts of things. However, Shaq was suggesting, if you are not the winner with the highest bid, whatever you bid, try and give us a donation. And I'll even go one step further, is Give whatever you can afford. So tonight, if you're not bidding, maybe give something, no matter how small it is, nothing is small. You give what you think you're capable of towards Yemen. Inshallah, Ya Rab, on the birthdays of our beautiful Imams, we can see prosperity in Yemen. Ya Rab, Ya Rab. Who would like to start me off on this beautiful- Rabbi, I want to start the first one. Will be easier. I'm, I'm sure that 500 from my end to start with. And but over here we have Australian dollars, not to man. <laughs> no, 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 yes, yes. I'm Thank talking you. about all. 500. 500 my currency. <laughs> 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 Everyone pays their currency. <laughs> 500 dollars from Chef Monsoon. 500 euros. 500 dollars. <laughs> 500 dollars. <laughs> 500 dollars. <laughs> 500 dollars. <laughs> Can I, can I also just uh, suggest to all any of the kids here as well, you spend a few dollars probably on getting some money going to get some work on even one dollar or five dollars out of your pocket money or whatever hustle you've got going on to raise funds for your daily living and whatnot. Uh, even that is that goes directly towards helping these poor kids in Yemen. So please donate generously and uh, no amount is too small. If you've got five cents in your pocket. Five hundred dollars from Chef Mansour. Who would like to outbid Chef Five hundred. Five hundred with Chef? Okay. Still five hundred. So is that a thousand yeah. A thousand dollars, mashallah. Mashallah. A thousand dollars. Who would like to outbid Chef and say him? Who would like to give eleven hundred dollars? Let's try and make it 1400 for the Matsumin, inshallah. All proceeds going into Yemen. Inshallah, when that orphan or when that poor person or that impoverished person or that person who's lost his loved ones, when they get some help, when they look in the sky and say, you know what, whoever gave me this money, may Allah help them. They may be smiling. Allah SWT said, those who want to practice real taqwa is to make another human happy. If you make another human happy, you make a lot happy. SubhanAllah. Who likes to make it clear now? We have raised 1500 so far. 
Those that no, 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 would raise a thousand so far. No, what about my 500? <laughs> including shares. What was that? It's including shares. No, no, it's including your 500 share. So you, oh, okay. yeah, so oh. but in terms of then the- Nobody bid, outbid me if they have given 500. My bid was 500. Yeah, but someone, you got, someone, um, someone gave another 500 share in parallel to you. That's not our bit. It has to be rules are rules, Hajrani. This, this is the only opportunity I get to do something more than shake. So I'll go 501. <laughs> make it easier. Say 550, 520. Well, okay. You wanted to get up to 1400. Let's get up to 1400. So I'll take it up to 1400, right? So that's now you've got 500 from Sayed, 500 from Sheikh, and you've got, you got 400 from me to up to 1400. Let's see where we go from here. So you're 1400? No, I'm up. <laughs> 500 plus 500 plus 400 gets it to 1400, right? Okay, there we go. So we've got another 100 over here. Another 100, okay. Another 100 of the world. Can you stop building this? I can't okay. keep the record. One thing, when you raise your hand and say 100, please, when, you, when we finish the program, just make your way out and, and please. So, we don't forget who you are. MashaAllah, that's five, five, a thousand, yeah. a thousand, eleven hundred, twelve hundred, fifty, okay, twelve fifty, thirteen fifty, MashaAllah, thirteen fifty, yes, I, I, I said you, yeah, 1350, 1450, Salah Muhammad Wali Muhammad. Allah Muhammad Wali Muhammad. 1450, 1550, 1650, 1650, 1650, 1650, 1650, 1850, 1850, 150, okay, so 2000, Salah ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad, Allah, Allah, Salah ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad, so that's 2000, Hajrabi 100 from my wife on behalf of her father, so 2500, 100, 100, I'm just talking about the accumulation share. <laughs> That's what. Two thousand five hundred. Do we have any other bids? We'll take anything. All for the sake of Yemen. Two thousand five hundred. Fifty. Two thousand five hundred and fifty. There's one here. Two thousand five. Two thousand six hundred and fifty. Two thousand six hundred and fifty. Can we reach three thousand? Two thousand six hundred and fifty. Our target is five thousand. What was that said? I said our target is five thousand, Hajami. Don't talk about three thousand. Is that a big Thirty dollars. Thirty dollars. We'll take it. Two thousand six hundred and eighty dollars. A thousand dollars, mashallah, mashallah. Salam ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Allah, salam ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Is that make intention on behalf of your marhumi? Three six eighty. Three six eighty. Okay, I'll go twenty to make it three three seven hundred. Right, it'll be easier. Three three thousand seven hundred. Brother Reza, would you like to make something? <laughs> 3,700. Yeah. Well, what am I bidding on? All the proceeds going to Yemen, inshallah. The difficulty will be, well, who do we give the bus to? We'll do it. We'll have another wrap, uh, option oh, now. Very nice. 3,700. We went around the room and said, everyone's giving money towards Yemen. So whatever you give, we'll put it on top of 3,700. 200. 
Harare way as a center we abide by rules. <laughs> <laughs> We're not here to rip off anybody. Not so for a second. <laughs> Three thousand nine hundred. Another one there. That's four thousand dollars. Sallallahu Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Oh, oh, well, anybody who has one case, man. please make sure you come and see one of us to so take your details and finalize them, please. That's four thousand dollars, inshallah, going towards Yemen. And please, brothers and sisters, if you're shy about bidding, once you know where to go to give some donations. But can we come back and can we sell this beautiful basket of goodies? Who would like to start me off? How much? $20. I'll take $20. But I'm sure you're not going to buy it for $20. $50. $50. We've got $200 at the door there. $200. $200. $300. $300. $500. $500. $500. $500. $500. $500. $500. $500. $500. $500. $500. $500. $500. $500. $500. $500. $500. $500. $500. $500. $500. $500. $500. $500. $500. $500. $500. $500. $500. $
Help me. Absolutely. 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 Who's going to give me a thousand dollars? Who's going to give me a thousand dollars? I think we've got a I should be a thousand. Two thousand? MashaAllah, Sallu ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad. Is that to bring it up to 2000 or you're donating 2000? Up to 2000? Okay, so that is $1,250 that the Hajj has donated, which brings it up to $2,000, yes. which then your secret sponsor can so, follow up. Alhamdulillah, a beautiful brother has donated $1,250. He's brought it up to two thousand dollars. That person who said that they will match it, congratulations! May Allah reward you for your beautiful intention. Let's all together say her and Allah Muhammad for all those who donated today. Salamu ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Brothers and sisters, Hajjabi, can I say a few words before you uh, continue? Oh, Sorry, Jazakumullah Khaira. Thank you very much. Barakallah Fikum. Like what Hajjabi was saying, Alhamdulillah, Imam Hussein Center, if it has flourished, which has flourished, Alhamdulillah, throughout the years, it's nothing because other than having such a supportive community that I always mention everywhere else in the world I have been, I said that not only because my first love is the, the last love, Really, the community of Imam Hussein Center, the Muslim, mashallah, the Shia community in Sydney have been always supportive. We know that uh, Lebanon is in need, Iraq is in need, Iran is in need, IHEC has mortgages in need, but every time, alhamdulillah, there has been any fundraising, the community has been very, very supportive. And especially when it comes to Yemen, always remember that if it was possible for you and I, we had an obligation to go and fight physically military fighting to protect those innocent children that are getting, uh, you know, dying. Because that is not feasible for us, the least that we can do to remove the hypocrisy from ourselves and inshallah show as a gesture of sincerity is what Quran says, yujahiduna be'amwalihim wa'anfusihim. Jihad with our life is not possible for us, but jihad with our wealth is possible. And jihad means that really you're going out of your way sacrificing some of your money, sharing the comfort that you have with those children that definitely there is no security, there is no, even like what Haj Ali was saying, sip of water for them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you in abundance in dunya and akhara, inshallah. Brothers and sisters, now we've got a problem. Uh, who's this go to? Does it go to the brother? I think, I think yeah, absolutely. Does that Allah pay Allah Akbar, inshallah. What was that? It goes to the guy who doubled it. Okay, that, 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 that's fair. That's fair, inshallah. So the guy or sister who doubled it, please collect this uh, after the program. After the program. After your donation. After your donation. Salam <laughs> so, alaikum, sisters. Keep happy. Be proud of who you are. Alhamdulillah, as Sheikh was saying, and you know what, Sheikh, your speech today was really spot on. I grew up in an area that was very, very Anglo-Saxon, and, and Alhamdulillah, I think back to how we grew up, Allah does protect you, and does protect you from evil, Alhamdulillah. Just keep remembering, just remind yourself every day that Allah is your guardian, and always the what Allah, Give for the sake of Allah, and no, nothing in this world can harm you. Salaam alaikum and have a lovely night. For the first shot. Where is Brother Fashad? Okay, he's coming. Well, Brother Fashad is coming. Actually, Brother Fashad, please join us. Inshallah, please welcome Brother Fashad with the warm salawat ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. I know that everybody's tired, and I, of course, you better listen. Uh, I know that everybody's tired, and I know that we've had a little bit of a long night already, and I apologize, we had some technical issues right at the beginning that uh, 
really for us, of course. So I apologize for that, but inshallah you'll enjoy the nasheed by, by our dear brother Fashad. And then we have a, uh, it's Farsi, yes, of course it's Farsi. Is there any other question? Then we have Lucky Girl Prizes, and then we have a special, very special presentation I must make on uh, behalf of somebody. So please, stick with me. Hello, Allah Muhammad, wa Ali Muhammad. The Eid Mubarak, we usually, when we recite the Nashid, we usually 